regular and, and welcome to a regular meeting of the city of city council of the city of Pearsall to be held today June 11 2019 the time is 701 p.m. may I have a roll call please mayor Mary Moore present mayor Croson council member Richard Lada council member Sonia Hernandez council member Brenda Devino here council member Robert Daniel present council member Roland Segovia here we have a quorum, so let us stand for our invocation as well as our pledge of allegiance. Mr. Fausto? Yes, ma'am. Can you do us the honor, please? Heavenly Father, we come before you at this moment, Lord God, and we just give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Father, that you are worthy of, and Lord. We come into your presence seeking your guidance, Father, seeking your blessing upon our city council members, our mayor, Lord, upon the administration staff and everyone involved in one form or another with the city. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit will just lead and guide today, Father, for the uh, person that is going to be our city manager here in the future, real soon, Lord. We ask in this in the name of Jesus Christ, this business is going to be handled, Lord, given wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as well. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there anyone signed up for citizens to be heard? No. Move on to item five, action to consent agenda. 5A, discussion of possible action regarding the approval of minutes for May 21, May 21st, 2019. Uh, need to entertain a motion to discuss, please. Motion to discuss. I have a second. All in favor? One show of hands, please. Thank you. Motion carries with that. I'll give you a few minutes to peruse over the minutes if you have it. Concerns, questions? Yeah. Uh, on 6D, on the minutes, uh, we had talked about putting the text of water minimum and board grant uh, for presentation today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was in an honor uh, for today. to address item 5A, please. 
Different on the agenda. And I agree. I uh, it was supposed to be for uh, an action item. It's just discussing review, and it was for termination of the contract. That's what I'd asked for. But that's okay. So but there's no there's no contract to terminate or agreement. Uh, the contractual uh, agreement. So like I said, I'll, I'll put it on the agenda for next time. Okay. I'll, I'll get the three signatures that I need. Well, what are the terms of the agreement? You, I believe you have it there. Uh, this is for the city attorney to represent the city of Pearsall. They And all it basically identifies is client and attorney agree. Attorney will devote his professional abilities to any matter to which client so directs, strives to keep client informed of all significant developments, and be available to answer inquiries. Client agrees to fully cooperate with attorney, including but not limited to keeping the attorney advised of all developments to which client has requested that city attorney address. Informing attorney promptly for any change in client's contact per person or telephone number promptly re responding to attorney's inquiries. Client agrees to compensate attorney for services at the annual rate of $100,000 payable in equal monthly installments of $8,333.33 on or before the first day of each month beginning February 1st, 2016. This fee agreement does not include representation of litigation matters. For all litigation matters, client agrees to compensate attorney for services at the following rates. Partners, 200 an hour. Associate attorneys, 175 an hour. Law clerks, $75 an hour. Legal assistants, $50 an hour. For copy jobs, less than 200 pages. Copies made at one of our offices will not be billed for jobs exceeding 200 pages. They will be billed for 90 cents per page. Out of pocket expenses included, but not limited to postage, filing fees, shipping, and copies not made at one of our offices will be billed to the client at our cost. Client agrees to pay to attorneys these costs. Client will not be charged for telephone calls to or from client staff mayor or council. Client has a right to counsel this agreement. Counsel this agreement and terminate attorney's representation at any time by written notice to the attorney. Attorney will provide written notice in the event that attorney decides to withdraw from representation. 
certification, client and attorney agree that this agreement can only be amended by a written document signed by both client and attorney. And again, it was dated January 26, 2016, um, Mayor Moore and Attorney Bob Moore. <clears throat> so it's an existing agreement. Yes, that's correct. And it continues to exist until until termination. Until there's a, a agreement between the city and the council. Correct. For an amendment. Any other question or discussion concerning this item? We'll move on to 7B. Discussion regarding update on the comparison study conducted by Economic Development Director, Tourism Board, and Main Street Board. This is an item for discussion. So we need to entertain a motion to discuss this. Motion to discuss. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? I show of hands. Yes, sir. <coughs> Council members, um, this item have, was previously identified um, to go ahead and do a comparison study in regards to the commercial rates of our surrounding areas. Um, we had the Tourism Development uh, Director, Economic Development Director, and Main Street Director all um, combined forces to go ahead and pull up some of our current fees and go ahead and compare them to the surrounding fees that were already identified in the Main Street program. Um, this is something that they were able to come up with. It's still in the preliminary phases. We're still trying to include some more of the, the fees that we are surrounded by in accordance with these surrounding communities. Um, we have Uche here to go ahead and, and go over this with you guys. And if you have any questions, Madam Mayor, Council Members, good evening. Good evening. Um, we had a bit of a challenge looking at these um, comparable cities because we needed to isolate cities that have the same demographics, you know, the same um, economic base, almost the same, to enable us to come up with something. But uh, basically, we realized that we were dealing with different ideologies. By that, I mean most of the cities that we isolated, they were using uh, uh, they were using valuation. They were you know value of the project or value of the contract to ask, you know to determine which fee. We don't use value of the project. You know, but um, we isolated Fox. The uh, Fort Stockton, the city of Fort Stockton, Brownfield, Crystal City, which were really comparable according to the Main Street study. And then we also included Condo, is not really comparable, but it's regional, it's, you know, uh, in terms of proximity. So I would like to clear, give us more details on that because she did a lot of. Uh, research on these uh, numbers. So I believe all of you have that I'm going to hand out uh, with some more attachments, which basically dismiss those evaluation costs the other cities use. So there's attachments to show the other cities evaluation costs. And the first thing I wanted to explain is I always like doing these things and working with other people because it gives me an educational experience. And what was great about this is uh, it pointed out some things we need to address. And one of those first things is um, the application we're currently using is dated 2004. So you see two dates under the cursor. You've got 2004 and 2013. 2004 is what we are currently charging or have been charging. In going into our website, we now use Medico. 
which is a list of all our ordinances that have the most current fees that have been approved as far as we've been able to upload into the system. And you can do it by search. So I went in and searched to find out what our fees are because across the board we want to see if we're charging what was approved or where we're at exactly with the fees we are charging the community. And what I found was an ordinance dated 2013 of fees. Now that would be about kind of the boom with the oil. So these fees are actually higher than what we're currently charging. So rather than go into a discussion about why are we using those fees, all of this, there have been people coming and going through the door. So whatever the incoming people were given is what we've been using. And so that's why 2004 rates are being used. What we need to clarify and move forward with is do we use the 2013 that are apparently approved or do we, on comparisons and discussions, move forward and set 2019 rates that we should be using from this point forward and whether we want to put in incentives because that is the biggest issue. Economic development, when you got new business, you want to encourage new business, you want to go ahead and provide them some kind of incentive. Uh, whether it's tax abatements, uh, a year off of some water rate reduction, whatever it is that might be beneficial to encourage more business. So from that point, we started looking to see what the other cities did. And as Uchi said, we are comparing with our local peers or state peers. These are cities that are similar in population, similar in demographics, and similar in uh, annual income, household income. So very, very um, similar to what City of Pearsall is in this state. The only regional one that's in there is Honda. And why these, there's like three or four others we could use, is their systems weren't readily available on the website, and I couldn't get called back. But this is enough for us to, let's start somewhere. That's the most important thing. Let's start somewhere, let's discuss it, and let's figure out how to move forward. So right now we're looking at um, residential fees, what do we charge for residential fees? So if you look to the right, it says see below. What's interesting is City of Pearsall charges a fee, an application fee, um, and that's pretty much it for residential new buildings, for remodeling, demolition, et cetera. Uh, a lot of cities are charging by square foot or the cost of whatever that project is. So I'm building a house that's gonna cost me $200,000. The cost is gonna be based on or the fee is going to be based on the cost of what it takes to build that house. And in some of these cities, that's what it is even for commercial. If they don't differentiate between commercial and residential, it's the cost of the project. So that's where it gets real confusing and it's difficult to provide you information because we're sort of comparing the way it's uh, looked at is different. It's like apples and oranges. We're charging by square foot. In some instances, they're charging by the cost of the project. So how do you differentiate as to are we comparable or not? Um, so if you go down, um, our most important thing we were trying to address was commercial rates. We want to encourage new business. We want to do, uh, hopefully maintain business. And so what are we charging people? Well, interestingly, we have a commercial application fee based on acreage. That's just an application fee. But because these other cities are charging based on the project costs, they lump a lot of that in. Even the occupancy certificate is lumped in because it's part of the cost of the project. They'll still do the inspections, they'll still do the occupancy certificate, but because the cost is different, it's considered one lump thing. And so it was really hard to say, well, this is what we're charging, we find the same rate because they charge differently. So I would suggest that you look at how we charge, see what's comparable where it does match. Um, for instance, both commercial and residential, when it says based on cost, see <coughs> attached, um, you can see that we charge, for instance, a new building, $100 and then 15 cents per square feet and then an application fee. In 2013, they raised that up to 300. You wanted to do remodeling, it was $50 plus 15 cents per square foot and an application fee. Then in 2013, that was $100 and et cetera. 
65 cents a square foot. But anyway, if you look and you turn over, I have in here the attachment I gave you, condo. They charge, again, by the project. So it's $80 for the first, this is commercial or residential, it's $80 for the first 2000 plus 14 for each additional up to um, a $25,000 project, basically. And it, and it goes on now. Three, almost $400 if it's $25,000 and above the cost of the project, all the way down to $5,000 for a million dollars and up, as far as what they charge and how they recoup their fees. Um, Hondo did that. We have Fort Stockton. Um, it's sort of in a boom town right now, or boom with their oil and uh, gas capital uh, industry going in. And Fort Stockton, they charge um, $1,000 and less. Um, say it's $15 for the first $1,000 plus $5 for each additional $1,000 or fraction thereof, up to $50,000. So you see the differences in how we're kind of looking at apples and oranges. Um, it's solely reliable in each city to set their own rates. It's good to do your homework. I'd like more time to find other comparable cities. We started with those Main Street recommended or others. We don't necessarily have to stay in Texas, but you know, Florida might be comparable to some other places we could compare to. Because we're just trying to get a ballpark. If somebody else doesn't like me doing it by square foot, I'm sure there are. Um, then we can actually compare apples to apples. And just get a feel for in 2019, somebody who has the same demographics, population, economic uh, status, what are they actually charging? Are they similar to ours? Are we too high or too low? What I do see, um, even in the smaller cities, is they have incentives that we have none. We don't have a tax evasion. We, one of the things on my job title has been very hard for me to push forward with, is business developer. Now I'll have businesses come in and say we're interested, who do we talk to for? And we, for instance, we have a solar energy company that wants to put solar panels and build uh, a solar plant out by where, um, what's the name of the tire? Cooper? Cooper. Cooper tires. So they're thinking about putting something out there. Well, they came, stopped by our office, and I helped lay us on to get them connected with the uh, appointments with the regional hospital, our city manager, and then the uh, county uh, office. And they were looking for tax abatement. They, they're, they're going on the outside of the city limits, the Burden County. They're also going to be the school district. And they're looking for incentives. They're going to build something that's going to cost over two to four hundred, uh, four million, I think it is. Um, and, and that first year or two, that whole structure thing is going to bring in two to three hundred people to build it out. And then that moves down once the infrastructure is place but it would be good it, it sounded like a, a worthwhile project but you know each case is separate we deal with each case but most of these companies do offer our company cities offer incentives so I attached Brownfield it's a small city like us they offer property tax rebatement property tax uh, abatement what's rebate property tax rebate and rebate and then an abatement a job creation incentive. You want businesses to come here, you're going to bring businesses uh, and give us jobs. Well, there's an incentive they offer. Tax and incremental financing, um, and then there's other funds that they get from the state. Hondo, or uh, basically neighbor of regional city, they have tax abatement. They also do the increment financing fee waivers. Some of these fees you know, I would have liked the city to have considered an application from uh, Cookies Creations for we're going to go and make improvements for building out our storefront. We'd like to get an abatement of reduction in fees or uh, a waiver on uh, redoing the front of it or down the wall. They had to pay a brick uh, wall fence and they had to pay $500 just to do that before they even started paying money towards. Uh, infrastructure improvement. They just wanted to turn the wall down so it's more open for and conducive for clientele customers to come into their store. But we couldn't do anything because there's nothing in the books yet. Well, please take your time when you can, discuss, decide, you know, where we're at with these rates. Give us more time to do more comparisons <coughs> if that's what you'd like. 
reestablish, update our fees, because it looks like we may need to do it on more than just building permit fees. <laughs> We're looking at water, utility fees, basically. But there's other things, animal control fees, all those fees. Are we comparable? Do we want to go ahead and update all those and be on for 2019 and have updated applications as well? And be able to respond professionally when businesses come in and say, I got this great idea. You know, what incentives would you offer? Um, give me a second. <laughs> and then I call and talk to the city manager or whoever they're interested in talking to and try to see if they can. Because some of these big deals, it is a case by case thing, and they will work out. And they did talk to the city manager, and they were talking about what we did with the STEC program, and they gave them a tax, what was it, the uh, pilot program. The pilot agreement, per se. Yeah, the pilot agreement. Anyway, we could do something like that if the solar energy company wants to come in. Um, they still pay, and they're on board, and they're bringing in money, but it's an incentive. Because if they don't get that, they'll go somewhere else and get the incentive. Mm -hmm. Because you want to lose business. We want to welcome business and provide at least a minimum. Right now, we don't have anything. Okay. Any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay, you, you brought up one business, five hundred dollars. How, how did you derive that, that amount? Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out here. Right. I'll let Leon explain it. It's uh, not well, my well, 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 it's, it's not his business to, to explain that. I, I need to know where y'all derived that five hundred dollars. Well, then I would go back to the. Uh, code enforcement officer with Julian paid, I think it was a $500 fee. Was that the application fee oh. based on the square footage to be able to tear down with their fees? Yeah, I think it was 572. But how did we calculate that? How, how did you calculate that? Because well, I think that might I'm, be I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I can't figure it out here. Uh, we have a commercial uh, rate by acreage. Yeah, that's a commercial Which is $500. Fees. By acre as well as the. It's four fifty for one acre. Or yes, less. that that one. So it probably was just a little. And then the and then the actual, actual business rate calculated by square foot makes up the difference. So you add A, which is by acreage, four fifty. You add the B part, which is by square foot. <coughs> That's how we. we do my, it. my question on that has been. I don't know how the council in 2004 meant to have this apply, whether it's to new business or existing businesses. Because I know there's a, a uh, code for new businesses and code for existing businesses as well. Okay, and those are things that I, I'd like for y'all to look at because you know, we went ahead, we went ahead, my wife went ahead and paid the fee, yeah. $500 just to stare down the fence. But the thing is, I don't know how this can be applied if we don't understand really how we're supposed to apply it as of yet. So uh, I'm assuming that it was for a new commercial business because that's that's what I've researched in, in most cities. That's what they do. New commercial businesses are applied a one-time fee for a permit. It wasn't, it wasn't specified like that. And that was why in the recommendation I gave you, all of you then, I say, what we need to do, whether we have to decide to delete the part A, which is that acreage, or to adopt it only for new business, like you're saying. Well, so that old business wouldn't pay the part A. You know, or it would give a 25% discount or whatever percentage discount. These are all ways of, and like Cleo said, this is just that 2004 ordinance. We have the 2030, which is much higher. And that one, unfortunately, is already on the website. If any citizen wants to check our rates, go to the website. You will be seeing the more expensive one, not this one we're using. Yes, so we are no longer consistent. Well, we need to do something so that we <coughs> That's right. That's, that's why I call for this to yes. be looked into, because we, we need to be uh, consistent, and we need to be fair to our citizens in terms of uh, the economy we live in. Uh, we don't want to overburden anyone with fees and so forth if we don't have to. Uh, that's my my opinion. Uh, I'd like, as you all just said before, uh, for you all to look into as well whether uh, other cities are 
assessing these fees because they have they had to outsource some of this certification or whether they have certified people on staff that require uh, fees of some sort. In some cities, they outsource some of this, so their fees are justified that way. So I guess a type of justification as to why they're being assessed these fees. Okay. Uh, I have one second, one at a time. Go. Um, the question I have is, does the ordinance not say if it's for existing business or or is it just on your interpretation of what the ordinance says? Okay. The other thing is with the prices of other towns like Fort Stockton, that's a booming oil filled town, been booming for 10 years. So those rates are going to be at another level. Um, our rates were always the lowest rates in Pearsall. People bought several homes here all the time. They weren't selling their homes because tax rates were low, water rates are low. Um, when people are trying to fix their homes, they're not fixing their homes because they're coming to the city hall and there's not a consistency on what they're telling them that that costs are. And the prices are very high for them to like demolish a piece of the building in the front when that building has been a business for many, many years, just different owners. But he's tearing it down to fix it. Paying $570, that's a lot of money to tear something that's yours. I, th I think that's why we're going in this direction, is trying to find out information and, and then do some kind of work with it so that we can consider what uh, we want to present to council. Yes, the application fee of $75 um, for the building is going to be the one the current one on the website. The is that? Is that the occupancy, the $75 occupancy has been that for many years? Yeah, you know, yeah. application fee is different. What you refer to application fee only, what we use now for certificate of occupancy, the application fee is just $15. But the one on the new website, application fee is $75. Not, like the not occupancy. Just, no, the, the, the occupancy will be much more. You, you add inspection fee, you add the certificate fee. Well, we're, and it's good for two years. And the, the other thing to consider is we've been allowing this, but I don't believe it's written in the ordinance anywhere that it's transferable. So sometimes a business will come in and it doesn't survive, and, and then somebody else comes in and we've been saying, okay, well, that occupancy certificate is still good. But we don't have anything that says that. So it's a new owner. How do we know the previous owner didn't change wiring, do something? It should have a reinspection. I think it says it's for two years, regardless of who owns it or not. Because there, if it's rental properties, you have some people <coughs> rent every two years. You know, so that stuff we have to clear up because we do have a lot of people that rent their houses. And a lot of people that are, that do rent their homes are putting up up for sale. You know and people that are moving into <coughs> it to work, they're not purchasing here because everything's too high. So I work in the real estate and I hear this constantly that they don't want to purchase here because there's no cons like consistency. We say one thing, it's always been two years, $75, regardless whose name it's under. Once that two year expires, they have to come back and reapply for that. Thing. I know commercial we've been doing it and then the question came up, but is it written anywhere? Do they they have to agree? Yeah, they have to go by the ordinance. Nobody can change it. Even well no, but that's just it. We haven't found where in the ordinance it says what you're explaining. I didn't look too much at the residential, I was more interested in the commercial. I just pulled the fees, but I didn't read it. Yes, Robert. Okay, uh, according to the 2013, it says every homestead, every 10 years, they have to do an application fee, inspection fee, and certificate. So how many how many citizens of Pearsall have done that? It, 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 and I was never aware of that. Exactly. I've lived in my house for 20 years. I've never done that. Exactly. exactly. And, and, the, and Councilman also told me that too. But that's what it says. What does it say? In the 2013 ordinance, when I pulled up, and I've got a copy of it, I pulled it off of our other ordinance. Because the ordinance was in 2013. Right. It was approved in 2013, a homestead fee. These other cities don't charge for that or ask for it because that's a given. 
but that we do, apparently in 2013. We're not now. If you look at 2004, it's blank. I didn't find anything. Yeah. It's never, never been enforced. Yeah. Yes. But in 2013, they created it. So if 2013 is the last time a lot of these rates were really addressed one-on-one, -on -one, though I believe some of the utility rates have been consistently uh, addressed, the, the real daily things. But this homestead thing, I don't even know why it's on I just have one other thing. Um, if I have a business and I want to change a window out, it costs me a thousand dollars. How much is my permit? To change it a window, it would be on top maybe seven hundred. So. No, well, according according to you, it said it was five hundred dollars for no. one acre no, no, less. No. Uh, no. Towards the bottom, it says building permit improvement. There's a remodeling, repair, replacement. For the. Uh, Right. The, the building permit improvement? Right. And it's 50, what we're charging now based for 2004, $50 plus 15 cents per square foot plus 15. So, you know, whatever that size of that window is, might be about 100 bucks or less. Mm -hmm. um, that square foot is what Demo, you know, if right. we thought right. about this and we looked at it, maybe tearing down that fence might have been approved to go under demolition. Exactly. And he would have paid 60 Bucks exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to get at. That there's no consistency. Well, that's why we're here to yeah. establish exactly and get it, it, it's straight. Great thing. Forward. We're at a point where we can deal with these confusions, uh, rebate, put a rebate sense in exactly. there. So we have. I just want to point out something important because um, uh, the council will not refer to the cities that we. Isolated one of them at least for Stockton mm -hmm. as an oil booming chief. However, their rates were rates that they adopted since 1950. Yeah, what I didn't put in here was it's the old uh, paycheck. I wasn't in a lot of small towns. Like, that's good that you yeah. brought that up. One second, lot. one second. When when the person is talking, just wait till we finish so we can just keep everything in decor. Good. Go is that old? Organized, you know, very outdated. Even when they, there's a way, I, I'm sure the lawyers will know better, there's a way they um, bring it forward. It's the same ordinance, they've not amended it, but they just like updated 2007. In other words, it's like all that ordinance is good for 2007, we're still using it. So the rates are so, some of them are like 0.05. Uh, cents per square foot. That's how they, you know, we use points, like we use 15 cents per square foot. They use point zero five, and they've been using it for 60 years or something like that. I've got copies yes. if you wanted to see. <laughs> you know, so I'm not even sure whether that applies to real world, but they are happy with it, they use it. What I'm trying to say is, the idea is not even high. You know, no, no, no. it's not high like ours. Ours is really it's high. Fine. You know, so we don't know whether their own is up to date in terms of cost of things because some of the rates in some of the brownfield, I think, their, their fee, some of them, I think it's a little bit of $2 or something. The paper we use is even more than $2. Just the paper to give you the certificate. So I really don't know where, how they. Uh, moving on with the, uh, you know, permitting uh, fee structure. So, I went and found their brief court code ordinances. Again, there's a conflict between what's in their code of ordinance and what's on their website. What I put for you guys to see is what's on their website, well, or, you know, on the page under uh, code compliance. I think that's where this was under. Yeah, code enforcement, and I click, see there's there, Fort Stockton, and underneath there, there's a place you can click, and it's code enforcement building, uh, and there's a place to click fees, um, and I come up with that. And so that's the fees where you, where you see on the attachment there that uh, you have. But when I click, and because they're using Unicode 2 and they list their ordinances. They're charging differently. The minimum permit fee, this is for residential construction, is $30. Construction is $0.44 cents per square foot. 
remodel is 41 cents per square foot. They did the same exact thing for commercial rate. It's no different. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do, we, we're going to probably have a workshop just on this because we can go back and forth finding discrepancies and we're not getting any here tonight because we need to move on to the next agenda item. So we'll definitely take this and do an entire workshop so we can so we can be on just one second so we can be on one accord and not have discrepancy and any code versus what's on the website okay yes ma'am my comment is i think what we should do we should do what is best for pearsall this town for stockton they said been there since 1950 something they're doing what's best for their town us going looking at all these other towns that's not best for pearsall we need to do what is best for We have to all. have a comparison so we know what yes, but we have we to. Yes, but we can compare our numbers that we have now and how long they've been there and what our community needs. I don't think the community cares what all these other towns are doing. Our town, this, we should go and compare our numbers with our own numbers. And for clarification, we were asked to get a comparison. No, no, right, it's, a, it's a comment that I want to make. Okay. That's not. If they turn out to do that, as you feel forward, whatever you feel is best to do. Thank you for your time and effort. Yeah, um, Cleo, the only thing I'll ask you is that, um, Cleo, the only thing I'll ask you just on my support is that uh, be very careful in the comparison because I'm just sick and tired of hearing the citizens of Pearsall complaining about fees, fees, fees. So just be careful. If you want my support, just stay low. You know, don't be comparing oh, sorry, us. Excuse me, so I completely understand. Don't be comparing us to. Uh, other other big cities you know stay stay low because like i said these people the citizens of the, the businesses i mean they've been paying fees and fees it's just and if you want my support yes ma'am allow me to do the job I'm exactly. To do. exactly and i will do my best and i will listen and respect you to the others yes, and i appreciate your time thank you ma'am. thank you moving on to item 7b <coughs> now 7c Discussion and possible action to review all city of Pearsall board and commissions and to accept applications. Motion to discuss. Second. All in favor? Yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor, Council Member, uh, I believe in y'all's packet, y'all have all the boards that we have available as part of charter, the list of the boards and commissions. Um, we have the ethics commission. We have the Planning and Zoning Commission, Main Street Advisory Board, Youth Advisory Committee, Tourism and Business Development Board, Economic Development Board, a Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee, the Library Board, Parks and Recreation. We have the Boards of Adjustment, Historic Landmark Preservation Commission, and Tax Increment, Increment Reinvestment Zone. These are all our boards and that we currently have um, on your list as well provides how many members and what is currently filled. We haven't received any applications um, for any of the boards that we're lacking. We have two vacant positions in the ethics board. Our planning and zoning is currently filled. Main Street Advisory Board is currently filled. The Youth Advisory Committee is lacking five positions. The Tourism and Business Development Board has two vacant positions. Economic Development Board has five vacant positions. We have nothing available for the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. We have five vacancies in the Library Board and five vacancies in the Parks and Recreation. There's five vacant positions in Board of Adjustments, seven positions uh, vacant and historic landmark preservation and we currently have identified a tax increment reinvestment zone but we don't have one at this time so there's no no applications for that one as well are so there any questions have you done anything to advertise and let the citizens know about the availability of we will go ahead and put it on the website um i know we had previously <coughs> once we ended up doing the main street the tourism the economic uh i think comprehensive um, steering committee was one of the last ones so we'll go ahead and showcase those out there um, provide all this information and hopefully we'll start getting a flow of applications um, but right now there hasn't been, there hasn't been. <coughs> oh, 
a little suggestion. Can, could you explain to them uh, what each committee uh, does as well? A, a little synopsis of, of what they, they're supposed to be, I mean, what, what, what they supposed to do. When you're advertising. Exactly. When you're, when you're advertising, not yeah. tonight. Yeah. We, we no. <laughs> no, no, not tonight. Not when tonight. You're advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, yes. when you're advertising. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll provide a description. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when you're advertising. Yes. We yes. will go ahead and do that. And, and we'll update you as. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Mayor, I'm going to make a motion on this. Yes, ma'am. I would like to make a motion for us to advertise for um, all of the for all the city Pearsall boards and commissions, um, and also all the app, the ones that do fill if they're up their two years, they have to reapply as well. That's part of the ordinance or the resolution which I'll have. So if they're filled and they've already completed their two years, they have to reapply. So just go back through there, that's my motion, to so go back, make sure if they've already reached their two years, to put, to advertise that they must reapply and um, put all, all boards in the newspaper and online. There's a motion to table. May I have a second, please? Second. All in favor, by show of hands. Motion carries unanimous. Alrighty, item 7D, discussion of possible action regarding the reimbursement for the uses of the Victor Trevino Sports Complex for Maverick Club fundraising tournament. This is an action item. Need to entertain a motion to discuss, please? Motion to discuss. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor, Council Member, um, this item was placed on the agenda. We have the Maverick Club fundraiser, they're currently here in the audience. Uh, they had their um, organization on May 19, 2019. They paid the sports complex fees and they're asking for reimbursement on their funding. Uh, we currently waive for the schools um, any entry fees or anything like that, but they are a booster club, so they have to come before you. Um, we provided in y'all's packets what was paid out, and they're here to answer any questions again. Uh, there's no comment, I'd like to make a motion. to this it's it's arsenal uh, slash george cavazos who's actually putting up the he, he's actually the one that hosted it for he, us but um he got all the teams together and then uh, everything but uh we had put up the money up front for for trophies for um so so you paid him you paid, no we did not pay him no no his, his money came out of the, out of the, the teams the teams yes. yes so he made money off this tournament yes and the, the reason we did it is um, we tried to get some money before school starts. We already have about $50,000 that uh, some of the coaches are wanting in equipment and stuff like that. And so we're trying to make enough money to try to get for the uh, to start up. Yeah, but we're not a nonprofit organization. Yeah. We are a 501 seat. We uh, raise money to subsidize what the school can supply from the yeah. So, so shouldn't shouldn't the the, uh, the club apply for for the for the permit instead of instead of who, who, who you hired? Uh, we actually he uh, he actually did us a favor. Um, he had already planned for this, and um, <coughs> we we told him if he ever had a cancellation or anything, he'd call us so we could make some money, and and that's what he did. <coughs> The only monies that he received was from the, the teams themselves. 
We had us over 20, 21 teams. So it was, it was a break that we, we made a really good profit off of it. Um, we also had the sophomore class working that, that day. And so they also made money as well for the sophomore class. So it, well, I'd like to make a motion if there's no more questions. Councilman, huh? He, he's oh, okay. Do you have a question first? Well, yeah, I have a comment. Comment. Uh, so, so you all got to keep all the proceeds or part of the proceeds? Uh, all, all of it. We got the uh, the door. We got the concession stand. Um, we did pay for the trophies. Um, like I said, and we made a portion of what the team fees. Uh, we didn't keep all the team fees. No, no, because as I said, he, without him, we wouldn't have teams. So, so Mr. Otero, is that is that in line with what the city's been doing with with uh, other fundraisers that we have for the cheerleaders or so forth? We don't. We don't uh, ask on that. Uh, it's only they, you know, they they either pay him or they don't pay him. We just as long as they pay the fee. Or it's been waived. It's let's go for us in my part. So you, well, the, the fees being asked to be waived by the district club, right? but, there's, there's, but there's another party involved here, so I don't know if we're going to consider the full amount of waiving uh, or just waive uh, their portion. Of it. Uh, I'm not sure. Our portion was the seven hundred. That's what you guys. No, that's what you're good. That's what we think. Yeah. Which is what we're asking for. That. And that's it. Was that that was the entire fee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they paid the entire. Fee. We we paid for the uh, park. Um, park. Yeah. Park. Yeah. Thank you. So on that, um, the school grounds has for the four fields was 480 a refundable deposit of 100 um, electrical usage 70 dollars and eight cents and then the concession time was 50. so you already got the 100 dollars back no we haven't received no. anything back. Yes. No. your refundable deposit you haven't got back no. no and that is once um we get all the paperwork um completed and stating that the so it'll be 600 part, so, 600. Six, 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 so you have your different costs there. <coughs> so what are they asking for? Six hundred and eight cents. So I don't know where y'all got the eight cents from. We were still trying to figure it out. No. The electrical usage. <laughs> it's probably because of the. It's fifty-three times. The electrical usage. Yeah. yeah. You left it out yeah. one second too long. <laughs> so it's a seven hundred oh eight back. He's the got whole I would like to make a motion that uh, we go ahead and reimburse the usage of the Victor Terminal Sports Complex to the Maverick uh, Club Fundraiser Tournament of uh, 708. Let them figure out the $100 deposit, but 708 will be uh, the amount. Uh, the $100 is automatically reimbursed already. Anyway. So that would be 608. 608. 608. I'm sorry. There's a motion on the table. I'll, I'll second that, with the understanding that any fu uh, future fundraisers, uh, if you're asking for fees to be waived, I think it's always been a practice to bring it to the council to the first. first instead of and then, yes. Yes. and not try to go to uh, somebody else to, to get this done because that's it's really how we'd like to see this. Done. It, it was kind of a last minute. We had uh, like two weeks before they told us. We will be having another one in September, and I definitely will be coming up here. <coughs> and we're there's a yes, go. Ahead. You can continue with discussion because there's only a motion and a second. So no, you want okay. to say something? Go on, go on. Okay, all in favor?
Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. All righty. Uh, discussion and update on the Public Works Department maintenance schedule. Contain a motion to discuss. Motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor, Council Members, uh, before you is a discussion that we have been trying to tackle on um, in regards to your concerns about public, uh, the maintenance schedule on the quadrants. We have tried to get with LMV in regards to a map, and now it's posted online as well. We do have a map from uh, Mr. Garibaldi and Mr. Otero um, to go ahead and put something in place. We're still reviewing it to kind of get together with the right of way crew and the streets department to get that sweeper um, up and moving, um, following up on the right of way crew. Uh, we haven't been able to sit down, we're probably going to be sitting down this week to go ahead and get a concrete plan on what objectives we need to overcome in regards not to just the streets, the water meters, everything encompass. Uh, also bring in uh, Republic Services, they have their own route as well. So that way we're not in the same quadrant as them. So we're trying to get all our maps together and make sure we um, tackle all the issues that we have. Um, if there are any other questions, hopefully it'll be brought to you for the next meeting. Um, if not, the special meeting coming up if we have something. Um, but that's something that we, all of us directors are trying to get together to provide something for you guys. Are there any questions on that? All righty, moving on to item F, discussion and possible action regarding Pearsall Main Street facade improvement, matching grant application for 321 East San Marcos Street. This is an action item. Need to entertain a motion to discuss, please. Motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Motion, please. Madam Mayor, Council Member, um, before you is the Main Street facade grant. Um, this is our second one that we are currently doing. Uh, this is with Craig Garnett and um, Leah's here to pass out the information. We also have it in y'all's packets. Um, again, this is a reimbursement, a reimbursement matching grant. Um, they are looking to do the repair of the wood trim and paint facade here on Rio Noises Current. They've already done the landscape, which has um, been very good. It's a great hill. They gather everything and, and put some rocks and, and stuff out there. Uh, what they're trying to do is they're going to refresh the paint and go ahead and repair some of their siding that needs some repair. Uh, provided to you is an invoice in regards to what the cost is, $7,850. Um, and they did provide a scope of work which identifies the 321 East Amato Street. Uh, they're going to go ahead and power wash the building, uh, replace damaged siding and repair for the wood trim, prime all new siding, paint building, paint metal bars. Um, the work area is to be maintained in orderly fashion. Their business hours are clean up the work day. So they'll keep everything clean and take out the trash and drop it. Yes, sir. Uh, before you begin, um, the first one that, that we approved, uh, is there a time frame? Because uh, I haven't seen any work being done. Um, the people that are going to start it, they, since it got rained out in Delhi, he was building the house. So they are going to start any time this month. We had put a time frame on it if we had more than, because we have a set amount of money. Exactly. So what we had said was, okay, say there's four different businesses that want to do 5000 each. If by 45 days the first person does not start the work, then they lose their spot and the next one is able to be to, to get the application. They'll bring their application. Being that we've only had one, um, he told us that he will have it done. There, he's. I've been talking to back and forth, and he, they said by this month they would be starting. Um, that the guy, he is, I forgot his name, Ricky, I don't remember his last name, he's building a house in, in Delhi, and because they got rained out, they were, they held out. He actually came to talk to me too and told me that they'd be starting by this month, and that it would be done by no later than the beginning of September. So, see, that, that was my only concern because, you know, we, we, we had approved it, and still there was no work. And, that, and that was the one thing we did put the time frame on it, but we did it if we had more, if we had four applicants, let's say that we had four with the total amount that they could 
spend, which is our total amount of money. As right. soon as that 45 days is up, the next person gets to go. Okay. But being that we only have the one, this is our second one, we didn't really push it, and he was our first one. He has been in contact with me, and he should be starting the very first. He said for sure, but I told him it has to be by the budget, because if you do it by next, you have to reapply. That's those. That's what we're going to do. And, he, and I told him, and, and he said that he would be willing to do all that. So, so he, hopefully by the he told me by no later than this Monday he's starting. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And then Rocky's here too. If you have any, if you have any questions, because she's she, she's been helping him with that. So the, the total amount that they're requesting is the three thousand nine twenty five out of seven thousand eight fifty. We currently have the budget of twenty thousand, and like she stated, that we previously approved, which that one was um, we were going to reimburse uh, two thousand four thirty seven. Um, I think it's a great project. I only have a, a question. Um, does everybody get a chance to apply for this uh, grant? Yes, it is. On it's street. on the Main Street District. So if you look at our website, it's one of those banners that are on there. Um, and it provides the map of the Main Street District. So any business that's on that, that falls within that district, can apply for the grant. And it has to be, they have to apply before construction. Um, and it is reimbursement. But then, uh, but how, how do you let the, how do people know that they're in that district? I understand what you're saying, look it up. But the do, 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 do the businesses know that they're in the district? Yes. <coughs> um, this flyer is actually right here. This is our Gibson Main Street facade improvement flyer matching the grant. Um, we have the designated area marked in that you can go onto the map and look at it. And actually, I have been talking to Main Street to see if we can extend it out. Being that we were the first year, you have to stay in your area for the first year. So I actually met <coughs> about last week trying to figure out what we can do to extend that out for the business district. But um, as of right now, it's from Elm to Ash Street and then Brazo to San Antonio, the dollar store, to um, Ray's Plumbing, Ash Street to Elm. Do we advertise this in the paper for the local yes. businesses? Yes. And it's on the website. It's it's posted everywhere here. Um, and I, whenever it came out, I went to every single business on Main Street and I hand delivered the application and the flyer. And I have been going back to ask people to do it. So that's it. And where can they pick up this application? It's online. We have it here and we have it at the Main Street office. Um, you, if you go to the Main Street page, you press on the flyer and it's up on the banner of the, the, the city of yourself. The banner's on there. As soon as you press it, it'll pop up the application and the flyer. And the application goes before the... It goes uh, first. I'll look it over, make sure everything's completed, then I'll take it to the city manager. After the city manager, it goes to the Main Street board. We go through it all. And if I have any questions, the Texas Main Street team from Austin, they will go over it with us. They have architects that is free service. So anytime I have a question, I can call them. And they even have um, a application that if you... Like the rendering that we got for... Um, they give you a rendering and they give you a diagnostic of your building saying what they would recommend. You don't have to do it. It's all free. Um, so if you want to apply for that too, that's completely free. That um, application's online too and I have it at the office. Um, and this is all with Main Street. If y'all would like to meet with them, they would be more than happy to come down here. I'm actually trying to set another one up, meaning that we do have y'all coming in here now. Um, they're very, very helpful. Anything we need, they're, they're more than willing to come. Um, they, they come all the time. Anytime we need any kind of surveys or anything, their services are free to us for the Main Street District and the city of Pearsall. So I've been able to do different um, studies um, for Pearsall. And I can actually get y'all a copy of that because y'all were not here and they gave us a whole study off of Pearsall. The last question I have is that uh, you mentioned something, uh, 20000 Okay, is that something that the council budgeted? Is that something? Okay, because we can go higher, right? Yes. And uh, in the application, it says that there's a $5,000 limit per business per year. Um, it's a max. So say your project is $10,000, we we'll max you $5,000. It can be less than that. Um, that is the max per year. So we that's why I said we can do four businesses of $5,000, because that's what our max is per business. But um, anything from $5,000 lower. And then in, in the application, I can get going one for the next one for sure. Um, we have different ones for signage, awning, anything like that. Um, actually, this is part of the application in here. Um, this is the part that they fill out telling you what they want to do. So they can do paint only, signage, awning and canopy, wood trim, removal, removing uh, facades, 
slip covers. It's the facade of your building, so the face of your building, anything you want to do to improve the face of your building. And we will take it to Main Street. Any questions we have, the architects will help us and tell us what they think. If it's paint, we can, we'll go back and forth. And if it's a sort brick, we can have handouts to tell you don't damage the brick. Um, so we'll have or, uh, different like conditions. So that's what we did with the first one. Um, so we try to make sure that we're, we're saving the building. We, we want them to look better, but you need to take care of them as well. So, so we try our best to do everything that way. So that's why it goes down to a four-step process, where I'll look at it first, then I'll go to the city manager, and then to the board, and it. Uh, Last question. Uh, no, one second. Oh, oh, we'll come back to you. You answered my question. It was five thousand dollars max, correct? Yeah. Uh, and how we allocated this money was from the uh, sing, uh, C for the month. No, fourth of July. Yeah. So yeah. May, may, make sure everybody go. go. No, no, no. Yes. That was that money is that is towards the revitalization fund. That's a separate fund. This is strictly out of the general fund. So it's everything that we for for. Collections of fees for property taxes, everything that we accumulate in the, the sales tax, city sales tax, that all accumulates into this. This is part of your general fund. The revitalization fund that you're speaking about is towards the Main Street revitalization yeah, fund, and that's separate to go ahead and do pocket parks or whatever. The and that happened, we haven't even touched that yet. We've been collecting, trying to move forward with that, but with the money we got from last year, wasn't enough to really do anything. So now that we do have um, a, a bigger budget to, to work with what we collected, now we start looking at different options of what we can do for our main street, which can be a pocket park. Okay, I was a little confused in regards to that, but. Yes. Um, so it's kind of like an incident that Chloe was talking about. This is more like an incident. Yes. Okay, the other thing is we have two approved applicants. So this would be the second one. The second. Who was the first one? Uh, Tom Barker? Black question. That one hasn't been done yet. No, he's going to start this month. Tom Barker. And they're doing, he's going to do the awning for the world finances, yes. the um, South Texas train, and then the treasure the box. Insurance. That whole area, he wants to do the awning, the new lighting, the repaint the whole building. Um, I have it all um, in my office. It's going to, okay. So we're allowing a two when they reach 20,000. That's what you're allowing. That's it. That's so right now, you currently only have two applicants. Yes. Okay. So that when that one comes to apply, more likely they'll get approved if it passes yes. to the mainstream board. Yes. The mainstream board here, or the mainstream board in Austin. We go down the list. So if basically I take it to the Texas Main Street. So whenever I go through it, that's whenever they get it, and I'll ask them the questions and see how they, what they would think, what they recommend. That's where they come in. And then if they think that it can be done different, I won't approve it. I will get. What they suggest, oh, so I will take the building it. and see yes. whatever they're what Their step is with me, so I don't move forward until oh. I get their approval. I get if they have conditions, I will go talk to the business okay. owners and say, I will take this further if you're okay with the conditions. I'm not going to do anything without them. No, you're saying it goes from Elm to Elm to Ash. Elm to Ash. This is Ash. Yes. Okay. It's and Elm. Behind Elm? Elm. No, it goes from Elm to Ash. Is it, it the Oh, yeah, Elm Street. Mm -hmm. yeah, Elm Street to Ash Street, and then um, right where the HEB is, and uh, where a uh, race plumbing, that street, Brazos. Okay. Was, no, was it San Marcos? No, Brazos. Oh, Brazos. 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 Okay, Brazos. And just what did it start on Elm Street? I'm just curious. She's got, she's where the dollar store is? Where the, do the dollar yeah. store is okay. right here? Um, so, race plumbing. Like Schmidt's office this way? Mm -hmm. uh, no, where Maverick Heating Coal is. Maverick Heating Coal and the fire department? Muski. I mean, uh, all the way to raise plumbing. And then it, it, it MT, what, no, what is the furniture? <laughs> 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 okay. So can y'all like up like that's what we that's what we were talking about. Okay. Um if you extend your um, area, you have to go through the Main Street program because there's an application that we filled out that's for three years. So you basically have to like a visit. Yes. Um but they're more than happy to do that because we store district and they're to preserve their downtown. So um, we have, and it has to be connecting. It can't skip the street. It, you have to be connecting. Yeah. Um, but we have been talking about it. Um, being that we've only been in it for a year, I wanted to wait a year before I even brought it up. And being that we're just starting this, I wanted to make sure the application was completely over with. I didn't want to bring in new, say, oh, now you're in it, but you can't apply until next year. So we have to figure out a time when we can do it. Um, so I have started talking to them about it, but we haven't even been in the program for a year. So that's what we're going to 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, may I entertain a motion, please? Yeah, I know that we uh, approved Pierce Hall Race Street facade, including the maximum grant for 321 East San Marcos Street as presented. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor, by show of hands. Motion carries in Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is item G, discussion of house action regarding approving a military pinning ceremony during the annual 4th of July celebration. This is an action item. We need to entertain a motion to discuss, please. Motion to discuss. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Let's show of hands. Yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor, Council Member, this um, item has been placed on the agenda. We had, um, got in contact, well, we were contacted by Mr. Uh, Arturo Rodriguez. He is a current resident and is serving in the Army. Uh, he is requesting to have his pinning ceremony during the city's 4th of July celebration. He is being promoted from captain to major, and then he will be equipped to Afghanistan. Um, for a year. Um, this is a great honor for our hometown to go ahead and recognize our veterans. So it is brought before you for approval based on your consideration. And if there are any questions, I would be Any questions? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion. Uh, we uh, approve the uh, military painting of the ceremonies during the uh, and the 4th of July celebration. There's a motion on the table. May I have a second? Yes, okay. All in favor by show of hands. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We're moving on to item H, discussion, discussion and possible action regarding the summer youth program. This is actually item H, anti motion to discuss, please. Motion to discuss. Second. Favor? Do I have a second? Okay. Second. <laughs> All in favor by show of hands, please. Yes, ma'am. Mayor, council member. Um, brought before you the summer youth uh, and a local agreement for our summer youth program. This is the same agreement that we have done previously. However, because our dates changed from June to July, given that we're, we're going ahead and going forces with the ACE program, we start July 1st or it was previously in June. Therefore, we had to update this in our local agreement. Everything stayed the same. This is for utilization of their facility. Um, the transportation, the playground, the gym, the cafeteria, swimming pool, everything that we utilize for the summer rec program. And again, this is the same agreement that we've done before, basically just amending the date. And we have to um, get this approved. The summer rec program will be starting shortly, um, and it is to be July summer, 1st. Uh, July 1st. Um, so are there any questions or comments or anything? So we can go ahead and this. Um, are you working collaboratively with the VA program? Yes. Yes, this year we are. This is our first year. Okay, so, okay. We can't charge because we're working with these. Yes, that's correct. And again, this is the same interlocal agreement that we've done previously. Um, the only thing changing here is the date from June to July. And um, it's the same facility. Any more questions? Or I, I have a question. Um, the the are they volunteers or or do we hire employees to to we hire staff? We hire staff. Yes. That remains the same like last year. Yes. We still provide what we've done previously, and then they go ahead and take on all the extra. Now that we're joining forces, we still have the same budget. We still have the same personnel. The same. Um, the same supplies and everything that we're going to go ahead and use, the same facility. But now that we're joining forces, it may be more children. So they're going to go ahead and take over those additional um, employees and, and crafts and stuff that we may need to go ahead and put everything together. But our budget remains the same and we stay All right. All ready. We need to entertain a motion to address item H, please. Well, I'll make a motion that uh, we go ahead and approve the interlocal agreement between the city of Pearsall and the Pearsall Independent School District uh, regarding the summer youth program. Here's a motion on the table. May I have a second, please? Second. All in favor, bless your hands, please. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. Thank you, sir. 
All right, righty, we moving on to item eight. An executive session according to the Texas Government Code, Chapter 5 by 1, Subchapter D. Item eight, discussion and consider appointing a city manager subject to negotiation of contract. Item B, discussion and consider our prime mayor and city council to negotiate a contract with your appointed city manager. We need to entertain a motion to go into executive session, please. Motion to go into executive session. You may have a second? Second. All in favor? The time is 8.17. All righty. There's no action taken in executive session, so we need to entertain a motion to return to general session. All in favor? Timer. The time is 932. 931. 936. 932. No, that's 932. Yeah. 932. Sorry. Needs a battery. Alrighty, open session. Item A. Discussion consider appointing a city manager subject to negotiation. Negotiating a contract. Action item, need to entertain the motion to discuss, please. Motion. Second. All in favor, by show of hands. All right. Discussion made. Well, first of all, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. It's been an interesting and um, very exciting about um, the future for Pearsall. And um, however, we can only choose one. So. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like the uh, city and council to, uh, I'd like to recommend uh, city manager of uh, Pearsall, uh, Mr. Federico Reyes, Jr. There's a motion on the table. All in favor by show of hands. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Welcome to the city of Pearsall. Good to be here. I appreciate it. I'm honored. Thank you very much. Item B, discussion and consider authorizing the mayor and or city council to negotiate a contract with the appointed city manager. I would like to make a motion here. Yes, ma'am. To authorize the mayor to negotiate a contract with the appointed city manager. Second. All in favor? Motion carries unanimously again. Um, we need the abbreviated version version of the city manager's report. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, first Friday event uh, went very well. It was held at Philip and Mark Oak Street. Also, it was extremely hot. It was a great success. It, it encompassed three businesses with two grand openings. Um, with the Main Street Director present, the Mayor and Council members, thank you all for attending. Um, these events have allowed a great opportunity for the Main Street Program to build relationships on behalf of the city with businesses and enhance their opportunity for thinking outside the box, bringing recognition to businesses, as well as attraction to the area for family gatherings. Um, summer movies in the park, uh, Mr. Rosero has already started uh, movies in the, in the park with the kids. Uh, they had their first showing June 6th, um, showcasing Smallfoot. Uh, Smallfoot, it was a great success also. Um, it included the water slide games, concession stands, door prizes. Um, please refer to our website to get upcoming events. Our next showing will be June 20th, 2019 to showcase uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Fourth of July event is underway. Tourism Director Ms. Cleo is doing a great job of getting donations for our local sponsors to ensure we have the support we need to provide a great show for our citizens. It will be held um, July 4th at 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Showing Casey and Roger Krieger, um, Patsy Boyce with the rendition of Patsy Hine and Patsy McKenzie, uh, Katie McKenzie. And the flyers are already showcased around the area. It's also on the website, so please go to the website to get the information. Um, the financial report is provided to you as well. I also updated it to kind of um, go over the year to date from the previous budget so you can take a look at that and see where, where we are last year versus this year with annexations, um, the sales tax um, and increasing and property taxes. 
uh, franchise fees increasing as well. Does anybody have questions on that, or do you want me to overdo? Okay. No questions. Just I have a question. Uh, I was going to ask you that tomorrow, uh, if you can forward me the information that I requested, uh, the open records request okay. on the uh, Fourth of July event. Uh, I wanted to see when the council approved that event, and uh, according to some of the records that I received from City Hall, uh, there was a proposed budget on August of 2018, but there was nothing that was approved for the 4th of July event. Okay. So if we can just do me a favor, please. Thank you. for us. Yes. Uh, there was a concern that I had on two properties here in the city of Pearsall. Okay. Uh, it was that old church on Yama Street that burned down. Okay. And then also the uh, property on Trinity Street. Uh, have you done any uh, uh, work on those by any chance? No, not, not as of yet. We'll, we'll look into those. We'll look into those. Thank you. Alrighty, moving on to review of bills. Questions on the bills? Okay. We're moving on to item 12, city council inquiries for staff, the future agendas. Any items you'd like to place on the agenda at this time? <coughs> well, I'll go ahead and do the, uh, the section, uh, the one that protects me under the, uh, the home rule charter, because uh, I did request for three items to be put on the agenda. I did it the way you asked the last time, mm -hmm. and they were not put on her. The termination of the contract with the city attorney, uh, the uh, Texas Development uh, Water Board grant that was not put on there, and then also the uh, presentation by uh, Mr. Fernando Torino was not put on there. So I'll just do it the old fashioned way and do the protection of the uh, three signatures uh, on the written notice to the city clerk. All right. General announcements? Motion to adjourn, please. Motion. Second. Good night.